Hey everyone, so this video actually got me thinking, thinking about the best approach for this video given I know the contact page or form can be very subjective. And after much deliberation, I decided to just wing it from the previous video's website. So in this video, I would walk you through how to 1. Create a contact form for free using WP Forms. We would also take a look at how to design the contact form from this to look very much like this. Now you probably already know from the title of this video that we'll be using the free version of Elementor to style this form. So let's get into it. Now I'm pointing out the plugins we'll be needing to achieve this. First, we'll be needing WP Forms. Secondly, we'd need Elementor. And lastly, QI add-ons for Elementor. And just as you would any other plugin, hover over this and select Add New. Then search for WP Forms. Install that. And while that installs, head on to search for Elementor. Do the same for this. And lastly, search for QI add-ons for Elementor. Install and then activate. Now let's activate the other plugins. Tick this to bulk action, activate and apply. Now I'm pretty religious about getting rid of what I have no immediate need of, be it plugins, themes or add-ons until I actually do. Which brings us to deactivating the set of widgets I won't be needing from the QI add-ons plugin. So I just have to hover over this and select widgets. And to locate the WP form style widgets without having to scroll down this page, I can just hit Ctrl F on my keyboard and search for WP forms. So with this active, I can go ahead and deactivate the rest. And essentially toggling this off deactivates all the widgets in each section and I can just repeat the same for the rest. Then hit this to save changes. Now let's move on to create the contact form. And I can easily do that by hovering over WP Forms to select Add New. And you should be brought to this setup page. So let's start out with naming this form as New Contact Form. But of course, you can choose what appeals most to you. And underneath this, you should find a number of pre-made templates to pick from. But let's just go with the blank form. And let's start out adding in fields either by clicking on them or by drag and drop. And to delete this, just click on the delete icon and confirm your request. So let's start out with the first field, the name. The next will be an email address. The next, a phone number. And for the subject field, let's go with the single line text. And lastly, we've got the message field. And for this, we can use the paragraph text. Okay, I think I forgot to mention we need to add this checkbox to accept terms of use. So let's head back and add in checkboxes underneath. All right, once you've got your fields added, let's move on to make adjustments to the field, starting with the name. Now, if we head back to our design reference, we can see we've got the name, email address, phone number, and subject fields, all subject to a 50% column weight. But just before we do that, first let's change the labels and placeholders of these fields. So starting off with the labels for the name, let's change this from name to your name. And change the format to simple. There'll be no need for descriptions, but be sure to toggle on required. And I want to repeat the same for the email address. And make this required. For the phone number, its label will be bracket open and close optional. Next, let's change the label of this field to subject and make this required. For this field, we've got your message as its label. Also make this required. And lastly, for the checkboxes, we'll be hiding the label, but let's move on to delete the second and third choice by clicking on the minus sign. Now let's head back to the design reference, copy this, head back and paste that into this field. Also make this required. Now let's move on to adding placeholders as well as condition this to a column width of 50%. So select the name field and toggle to the advanced tab. And you want to change the field size to large. And to condition this field to a column width of 50%, let's move over to the CSS class. Select show layout and let's go with two columns to pick the first column, which is where the first field goes into. Now let's do the same for the email address. Select advanced, its field size set to large, Placeholder text, email address. For the CSS class, show layout. Select the first, and this time we want to go with the second column. So that conditions both fields at both sides of your row. 
And with that in mind, I can just quickly make edit to these fields. Now for the message field, I will just have to change the placeholder text to tell us about your project. And lastly, let's hide the label for the checkbox field. So select this, head to advanced and hide label. Now let's take one quick look at the design reference and for each submit button, we've got this titled as send message. But just before we change that, let's see if all changes made and switch over to the settings tab. And this will be the submit button text. So let's change this to send message. Save changes and switch over to the notifications tab. Now there really isn't more to do here since these short codes are all automated settings meant to deliver email notifications from the contact form to this said email address. But if you're having troubles getting email notifications after setting this up, I'll leave a video linked in the description to help resolve that. Now let's head to the confirmation tab. And essentially this helps us condition what a user sees after they've submitted a form on your site. So we can easily adjust the confirmation settings to display a success message, take a user to a page on the site, or redirect them to a specific URL. I'll just leave this set to the message confirmation type, and that's all we need setting up the form. Now let's move over to the page you'd want to add the form to. So I just got to save all changes and close this up. Head to Pages, and I want to edit the home page with Elementor. All right, once this opens up, you'll want to head to the section you want the form added. And let's search for WP Forms in the Widgets panel. And it's very likely you'll find these two options here. This from the QI Addons plugin, and this from WP Forms. For this video, we'll be going with the first. So just drag this into this column. Now let's move on to style this form. All right, so starting out with the labels, that is the text at the top. For its typography, let's click on this pencil icon. And for the font family, let's change this from default to GT Wildshine. Now, this is actually a custom font that I added to this website. And by default, you are not going to find it either on WordPress or in the Elementor typography. So if you want to learn how to add custom fonts to your WordPress website, a video will be linked in the description. So you can just check that out. All right, so I'm just going to select this. And for its font size, let's change this to 12 pixels. And for its weight, let's change this from default to 400. So that's pretty much all we need to do for its typography. So I'm just going to come out of that. And for its label color, let's click into this box icon. And I'm just going to change this to hashtag triple b 2 s All right, moving on, let's head on to the input style. That is the field in themselves. For the input typography, let's click on this. And for its font family, let's change this to GT Wildshine. And for the font size, let's change this to 14 pixels. Its width, let's change this to bold. So I'm just going to select bold. Now, the next thing I want to do is to add in a little bit of letter spacing to our text. And as you can see, this is a little bit close to each other. So for the letter spacing, I'm just going to make this 0.5. And that's pretty much all we need to do for its typography. So I'm just going to come out of that. And for the input color, that is the text color. I'm just going to make this black. Okay. So coming out of that for the background color, that is this background in here. Let's click on this. And if we wanted to make this red, we can just make that red. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go with white. Okay. So coming out of that for its body type, let's make this solid. And for its body width, we can simply make that customization in here. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to add in borders just to the bottom. So I'm just going to make this zero on link all values here. And for the border to the bottom, let's make this two pixels and let's make customizations to the border color. So I'm just going to click on this. And for the border color, let's make this hashtag triple B6. But of course, if you wanted to add in your color, you can easily do that in here. All right. So coming out of that for each border radius, I'm just going to make this zero. Okay, so the next option we have here would be the checkbox style, which is this particular checkbox in here. Okay, so let's open this up. And for its size, let's leave this set to 15 pixels. Now we don't have any further customizations to make here. So I'm just going to leave this as is and we can move over to the radio style. Now because we didn't add a radio field to our form, I'm just going to skip past this and move over to the button style. Okay, so starting out with the button typography, let's click on this. And for its font family, let's change this to GT Wildshine, its font size, 16 pixels. For its width, let's change this to bold. 
And that's pretty much all we need to do for its typography. So I'm just going to come out of that. And for the text color, that is this text in here. Let's change this to white. So I'm just going to make this white. And for its background color, let's make this black. So I'm just going to make that black. Okay. And since we don't have need for adding borders to our button, I'm just going to leave this option as is. Now the second to last thing I want to do in here for the button style is to get rid of the border radius on our button. So I'm just going to make these two pixels. Okay, so moving on to the last option we have here. When you change this button full width to yes, this particular text in here is supposed to be aligned to the middle. But regardless of that, in the next style settings, we're going to make corrections to this. So moving on to the spacing style, essentially this helps us control the spacing between our items. And starting out to the form item space, that is the spacing in between our forms, let's make this 15 pixels to the top and bottom. And since we don't have control over the left and right spacing, we just got to stick with the top and bottom. Okay, now for the label spacing, that is the spacing in between our labels and the placeholders. Let's make this 10 pixels. And for the input padding, that is the padding in between our fields. Let's make this 10 pixels solely to the bottom. So I'm just going to unlink all values here. And for its bottom, let's make this 10 pixels. Now the next option we'll have here will be the text area height. That is the height of this particular field. Let's make this 150. But that's just left to you and your preferences. Now the next option we'll have here will be our button margin. That is the margin surrounding our button. Now what I want to do is to add in a little bit of margin to the top. So I can just unlink all values here. And for the top, I can just make this 10. Now one last thing I want to do in here for the spacing style is to make customizations to the button pattern. And just as I said, we'll be making corrections to this text and align it to the middle. And we can easily do that by making customizations to the button pattern. So I can just unlink all values here and for the top, we can make this 20. And for the bottom, we can make this 20. Now, the last thing I want to do in here is to make this 230. And we can see we've got the text aligned to the middle. Now, this is only applicable if you change the button's full width to yes. And still, the text isn't aligned to the middle. You can just easily make corrections to that with the button's pattern. So that's pretty much all we need to do style in our forms. Now, one last option here will be the global style. And essentially, this helps us to align everything we have here to the center, to the right, or to the left. I'm just going to leave this set to the left. So let's take a peek at how this looks across devices. Select the responsive mode and change this to laptop. Same goes for a tablet. And we can see this is pretty responsive. The only problems you might have will be alignment of this text. So you can just move over to the spacing style to make slight adjustments to that.